Hello, everyone. I welcome you to my presentation on interpretable deep learning algorithms for prokaryotic genome annotation. This is a joint work between Hirok Shorker, Rob Petro, and Mohamed Ulamin. Hirok Shorker and Rob Petro are from University of Maryland at College Park, and Mohamed Ulamin is from University, uh, Fordham University at New York. So here first we define the problems with the genome annotations. The current genome annotation problems can be um, can be uh, described as, uh, as as the problem that that despite having thousands of NCBI bacterial genomes, uh, we, we uh, in the NCBI databases we, we have found that 12,000 of the NCBI bacterial genome have wrong rRNA ends. Um, so detailed annotations not present in canonical files like the five parameters, three parameters, transcription factors, uh, binding sites, etc. Um, uh, doesn't have a like a detailed annotation in the, in the NCBA files. So the idea is to use the deep network to scan overall genomic sequences. Uh, so we'll use multi-class classification for all types of annotations, and we'll also integrate detailed information from model organism databases. So here we represent the data representation using the KMR embedding. So we all know that embeddings represent um, a, a data as a, as a vector of numbers. So here we, we are um, basically using tremors uh, from the DNA sequences. And uh, we show that, um, uh, so we consider the 64 codons representation here. And, and the interesting part is if you look at the start codon clusters here, like that has the ATG, GTG, TTG, CTG, ATG, uh, and, and ATC, they are basically clustered all together here. Well, well the start codons basically, uh, the TAG, TAA, and TGA, they, they are clustered around here. So here you see that we have basically color coded the, the, the 20 classes of the 64 codons and, and the similar codons um, um, are like having similar colors are, are shown to be nearer in this presentation. So here we present the, the algorithm. How do we convert um, the, the tremors to a camera representation? So here, um, so we show that the, the KMRs are basically, first of all, converted to a co-occurrence matrix, such as here you see the KMR GAT is basically closer to ATT and TTA. So see here our window is basically five. So you see that uh, uh, ATT is again closer to GAT and TTA and TSC, while TTA is closer to all of uh, all of the other uh, KMRs and so on for TSC and ACA. So as you see, if, if we basically um, convert a, convert this presentation, the coherence matrix into two dimensional um, space by converting the five dimension to 2D. So you see that GAT is closer to TTA and ATT, uh, while TTA is closer to uh, among all of these things. So what we do is basically we learn the representation by learning the mapping uh, from this co-occurrence matrix to this, to this 2D dimension. So here we show the workflow of the deep penetrative algorithm. We basically use three models for the classification task. We use the model for the start coding classification. We use the model for the stop coding classification. We use another one for the classification of the protein coding nucleotides. So here we, we show you the uh, model one in particular uh, that basically um, works on the start of a gene, the model two that works on the stop of a gene, and the model three that works on the protein coding sequences. So these are basically um, the, the predictions are, are used in a, in a scoring algorithm for genome annotations. Um, so in this slide, we show the, the, the LSTM network that we use for all these three classification tasks of start, stop, and, and protein coding uh, region identification. So here we, we, we show that we basically put the camera vector representation at the top that goes through the bidirectional LSTM1 and LSTM2 network that goes through um, the several dense layer with sigma deactivation. And then it goes through the time distributed dense with sigma deactivation for either start codon or stop codon or gene or intergenic region uh, identification. So here we show you the, um, the, the equation that we use for, for the identification of like a detected gene. So which involves like a, you know, identification of the both index or either only start, only stop and, and, or, and, 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 and the actual gene containing uh, within, within a larger um, area. So the precision is like total predicted minus the wrong ones over total predicted and the recall is the detected over total in CBA annotations. And the F score is like two times precision times recall over precision plus recall. So what we do is that we basically, um, um, identify the threshold or score that basically gives us the best precision recall and, and, and F score for this uh, classification task. So here we show you the histogram of the overlap and the undetected sequence like in length. So you see that um, the undetected uh, sequence lengths are very small in general. So this is this presentation is in the in, in, in the log scale while um, on the on the x -axis, uh, on the y axis we show the sequence count and, and the overlap are basically uh, comes after the, the undetected part. So they're all between um, a few hundred uh, sequence length. Um, so here is the visualization of the predicted annotations based on the score, and you see that uh, the genes uh, we could identify most of the genes we could so uh, 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 considerable portions of, of the identified genes are like uh, the green colors are basically overlap sequences. The wrong ones are are basically uh, the red ones, which are basically uh, distributed all over these uh, presentations. This plot in particular. 
Okay, so here we compare the accuracy of our model in, in F score with other methods like gene marks, the particle and glimmer. So deep annotator, our model shows that it, it has an F score of 94%, which is basically better than glimmer and as good as gene mark and, and little, little less than particle. But the interesting part is since we are training our data set on the NCBA database, which already has a lot of error in the annotation, the, the error of the model is coming from the data itself. So it shows that if we work on a, a, a grant to data set, then, we, then, then this model has the potential to do better than all other models. So the challenges. Um, so now we come to the interpretable uh, deep annotation part. So we show that uh, deep learning models should be able to um, handle high continuity heterogeneous features. Well, the model should capture the underlying mechanism of biological significance. The model should be interpretable in terms of its learned representations. We should be able to reuse the trained model weights in a second related task. So uh, here we show you the, 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 the identification of the start region and the stop region by the, by the proposed model. And, 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 and why do these models do a very good task in, in, in that particular identification? So um, here you see that for the start identification test, there is, there is a red band that's, that's coming up. This is the, basically the, the start codons. And before that, there's another band coming up. This is basically coming from, from the, um, uh, the, the, the so-called um, uh, Chandler-Darno sequences. And, and before that, we, we have basically many random sequences here. So uh, here on the stop codon, you see that right before the stop codon, there's a certain set of patterns that, that we identified in the model. And these, are, these, are all, these all became visible through the interpretable deep learning part. So the interpretable deep learning part involves like extracting the representation of, of these uh, start codon sequences and then converting it to, to this visualization uh, by the application of, um, um, of a set of um, uh, algebraic methods. Um, so it's basically um, um, a, a matrix uh, multiplication over the sequence representation and, and then visualizing it in a 2D space. So with this, I, I stop my presentation and, and thank you for your attention.